Hey, so good day there, uh, Mops crew of Fort Saskatchewan. Um, I just need to start by saying this. I am getting off easy uh, here today. Uh, let me tell you, showing up to a room full of heroes like yourself um, as, a, as a guy, man, that, that would be uh, incredibly intimidating. So I'm thankful that I get this means to hopefully speak into and, and share something of of value with you uh, today. And now, before I continue on, I want to give a little preface to, to what I want to share. I, I swore to myself that um, I would not teach on parenting until uh, my kids have graduated. And so uh, you need to know that I'm about to share a parenting story and this is not me teaching on parenting. This is not me um, giving a prescriptive set of instructions. Rather, this is just merely me describing uh, something that happened and if in the midst of the story there is something of valuable um, or of value to you then um, it's by the grace of God okay let me tell you all by the grace of God anyways so with that in mind um, something that my family has done is we have regularly and consistent consistently scheduled family movie night, family pizza night, family game night, family activity night. It's something that we have placed literally and physically um, in our calendars that guide our, our days, our, our weeks, our months. Um, and it's something we've used and guarded. Um, actually, we've, we've guarded it like with sacredly, really. Um, barring life or death circumstances, if uh, something comes up, someone approaches us, an organization comes us, comes to us and asks um, for us to fill a uh, place in our calendar where we have already scheduled family night, um, we just kindly and gently decline and, and tell them that we've actually already got an appointment that night. Um, so that's something we've, we've worked into our, our, our family norms. Our kids have learned that rhythm and actually for the most part they have uh, really, really enjoyed it. Um, now that said, uh, my kids are nine and 10 I got two boys, by the way, if you, if you don't know that already. And um, I, I recognize that if or when they hit teenage years and that shifts, we're going to have to maybe recalculate, figure this out. But nonetheless, this is where we're at today. Anyways, um, going back a, a few weeks before this COVID-19 craziness hit, uh, there was this series of four weeks where I was just like swamped with, with work. Not unlike I'm sure things your family or your home has faced as well. And so I strategically and purposely did not schedule any family night for four weeks straight. You can see the lack of parenting wisdom in that right now. So as I already said, this isn't me giving advice. <laughs> this is me just telling you what's happened. We hit week three. And um, part of our... Our, our, our daily routines include us kind of tucking in our kids and, and praying with them. And so I was doing this with one of my sons and in, in week three, um, one of my boys looks at me and goes, hey dad, um, I said, yeah, yeah, son, what's up? And he goes, are we gonna schedule any family nights soon? And I realized my air so fast and uh, I actually literally got up, I went and grabbed my phone I brought it into the room. I laid down on the bed beside him. We opened up the calendar and we uh, scheduled the next month's, uh, you know, family month time or family time. I was, I share that story because um, it makes the point that I want to make uh, to you um, in regards to your verse of the year. See, your, your verse of the year is that Jesus has come to give us life um, and give us life to the full. And I, I think that the key word for us, at least for today, is the word the. What happens is when we actually take out or remove the the, um, we just get the phrase life to full. And when life is too full, it leads us to this place where we cannot experience life to my story is just a story about parenting, uh, but I believe it actually illustrates a, a spiritual truth um, that's just as real. The truth is that when life is too full, we cannot experience life to the full. 
You see, the the is the most important word. So your verse um, of the year is actually John 10, 10. And um, in it, Jesus, on, on a greater or a bigger level, he's actually um, teaching about himself being the good shepherd. Now, in the midst of um, this teaching, um, Jesus speaks to how... Um, you know, his, his sheep will know and he will follow him. And, and he elaborates a little bit further from a passage, Johnny, uh, as well. Um, thing for us in 2020 is when we see cattle or, or, or sheep herds, uh, we get this image of this, uh, you know, this section of land perhaps that's fenced in with barbed wire fence and the cattle, the sheep, they just sort of stay put. That's not how life was in Jesus' day. Uh, in Jesus' day, uh, it was important for them to actually live a life where they were really wanderers. A shepherd and his sheep were nomadic wanderers. They would walk to find food. And the sheep would follow the shepherd. More specifically, they would follow the, the voice of the shepherd as they looked to find food. Food in a land that was very different um, from ours here in, in Canada. So it was significant for the sheep to know the voice of the shepherd. And as they knew and followed the voice of the shepherd, they were able to get the food that they needed for the day. Now, Here's where it applies for us. When we engage in a life, much like the life I lived in that month I was speaking of, in fact, where life is just too full, we, we step away from the rhythms that are necessary to experience life to the full. And what Jesus longs for you more than anything is to experience his personal, intimate love. A love that's experienced as we listen to him, as we follow him, as we walk with him, our good shepherd. An experience of gaining life to the full, where we get what we need for that day, for tomorrow has enough worries for itself, right? And so I want to leave you with the significance of the, that I think the, the is the key word in the phrase life to the full. And so as you gather today, even in your, your online uh, chat groups, um, I'd encourage you to talk about the, the, uh, more specifically talk about what are ways that you allow yourself to find um, time to slow down, to listen for Jesus, to follow Jesus, to just day by day walk with Jesus, because that's what he wants for you. Now, I, I want to add this. I know that all of us in some form or another are grieving in this crazy COVID-19 reality. There's things we've are missing out on that we love, that we enjoy, whatever that is for you. It's okay to grieve that. It, it, that's okay. That said, there's also a gift in the midst of this season. It's the gift of time to figure out how to find the the. So again, encourage one another, um, bless one another with perhaps new ways that you can grow in your capacity to experience the the in your verse. Because when life is too full, it leads us to a place where we cannot experience life to the full. And what Jesus longs for is a relationship with you where you're listening to him, you're following him, and you're walking with him. Hey moms, I wrap up with this. You really are heroes. You're doing the most important work uh, one can do. 
So know that in this season and in all seasons, you were created for such a time as this. Blessings on.